This is the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga, a ridiculously large 3D printer. It has a build volume of 800 by 800 by 1000 millimeters. And to my knowledge, there aren't very many consumer grade 3D printers of the scale. So with a big 3D printer comes big responsibilities, big challenges, and big advantages. We're gonna go over all of it today, so settle in as I walk you through the experience of owning the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. Before we begin, I just wanna say that this review of the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga is gonna revolve around my experience of the 3D printer. A lot of other YouTubers have also gotten this printer and have had varying degrees of success using it. For example, I know Joel, the 3D printing nerd, got this printer as well, and he's had catastrophic failures with it, whereas I've had a relatively good time with it. So I'll also link some other reviews in the description if you want to see other people's experience with the Elgu Orange Storm Giga. So this printer was originally released on Kickstarter, and people who backed the Kickstarter will probably be getting their printer in April or May. I got early access to this 3D printer because Elegoo is sponsoring this video. Um, they sent me this printer for free. When this printer does release, it'll retail for $2,500, which is on the expensive side, but the good news is you could sell your house and live in your 3D printer, so I see this as an absolute win. So the first thing we should probably talk about is the logistics of receiving the package that it comes in and setting it up. Because this comes in two boxes, both of which come on pallets and combines weigh 300 pounds. So if you live in a apartment or condo that is up a flight of stairs, or if you have a small house and not much space, you're going to want to think carefully of why you would want this printer. Whatever room you put it in turns into the 3D printer room. This used to be my office, but now I call it the 3D printer room because there is an enormous 3D printer inside it. The way I put together this 3D printer was my wife and I opened the boxes and carried it piece by piece upstairs, which took a long time, but it saved us from breaking our backs. And then it took us an hour and a half to assemble it on stream. It's possible to do it on your own, but Uncle Jesse wouldn't recommend doing it. So here's one thing I'm worried about. Imagine this cube is the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. Because it's so big, it'll deform pretty easily. If you were to lean on it, it could bend around like this. And if your floor is uneven, you could warp the bottom of the printer, potentially throwing off your bed leveling. Let's do an experiment. Alright, so I've moved the print head to the bottom right hand corner of the 3D printer. And we've now entered the advanced bed leveling feature, which lets us precisely measure the height of the bed at certain points. So right now we're sitting at negative 0.21 millimeters. Let's see what happens when I put a roll of tape underneath the foot of the 3D printer. So let's re-measure that. We've now gone down by quite a bit, or actually gone up technically. We're at negative 0.14. And let me take that roll of tape back out and see if we go back to where we were before. Now let's remeasure. We're pretty much back to where we were in the beginning. So if you ever were to move your 3D printer, you'd have to re-level it every single time you moved it. I've heard lots of other creators talking about putting the printer on casters so it could be moved around easily. But keep in mind, if your floor is not even, moving the printer around will warp the build plate. So let's talk about some 3D prints, starting off with some benchies. This first benchy was made using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and a brim bed adhesion. That's why you see this sharp, unfinished edge to the first layer over here. But if you were to look carefully at this, you'll see there's a whole bunch of artifacts um, horizontally on it. I believe I need to dial in my extrusion settings a little bit more, but overall, I'm quite happy with this given how big the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga is. This Benchy came on the USB of the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga, and it's a little bit bigger than the default Benchy. This Benchy came out a lot cleaner. It has some artifacts horizontally as well, but a lot less than uh, this one. And I'm impressed with the overhangs. Uh, the text is not very legible here, but it is on the bottom. And overall, not bad. Now this big Benchy, which is a 300% Benchy, was made using the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. And I think this is my favorite of the bunch. 
If you look at the hull, it is very clean with no resonance, no fish scaling, and very little um, artifacts horizontally. And the rest of the Benchy is pretty solid. I think this offers a good compromise between quality and print speed because this huge thing took two hours to print, which is a very fast time for a 300% Benchy. Speaking of fast, this abomination was made using the one millimeter nozzle at a 0.8 layer height. It's really bad in terms of its quality, but it did only take 45 minutes to print. That's right, a 300% Benchy took 45 minutes to print. Obviously, I paid a price for that, but if you want a mechanical part or a functional part that doesn't have to look good but is enormous, I now have a good setting to use. Another test print I did was this really big Doug Dimidome with an enormous hat. He's 950 millimeters tall, and I did this test print because I wanted to see if the printer would still print with good quality at a very tall height. This print was done with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle at a 0.4 layer height, and obviously the quality is not the best, but what we care about is how does the quality of his hat develop as it gets longer. In the beginning, it's pretty good, and 950 millimeters later, it's still pretty good. Aside from a really bad top layer, the quality in the XY direction doesn't really vary that much. Visually, it looks almost the same as it does at the very base of the hat. So this goes to show, over the course of a very tall print, you shouldn't really expect much degradation in quality. Now let's talk about my first big print on the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga, this Gandalf model. But before I go into the details of this Gandalf, let me show you what it took to get him to print. I ran into almost every type of error under the sun while trying to get this Gandalf model to work. Some of it was my fault and some of it I don't think was my fault. If you look carefully, you'll notice that I printed Gandalf in several parts and attached them together with glue. The first problem I ran into was with his legs. When these were printing, the printer stopped at a certain layer and paused. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get the printer to resume the print. I thought this would be a one-off error, so I tried it again, and the exact same thing happened over here. It got to a certain layer and just completely stopped. I solved this problem by re-slicing the files and putting them on a fresh USB. So after I did that, the print worked successfully. This leads me to believe that somehow the USB got corrupted. Over here, you can see a layer shift that happened. Again, this was fixed by formatting the USB and putting the sliced file back on it. And then we have a different kind of layer shift here. In this case, the bottom of the print actually detached from the build plate, so it started sliding around. So this was a mechanical layer shift as opposed to a software layer shift. I also ran into another subtle problem. Look at how smooth the fabric of his robe is compared to his hands his sword especially, and his shoes. I'll show you what happens. Since the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga has four build plates, you have the ability to heat them up independently. I wasn't able to figure out how to do it in the software, so I just injected my own manual G-code to heat up only one build plate at a time while printing. One time when I did this, for some reason, the printer decided to gouge the build plate. I don't know if it was my fault or the printer's fault, but what happened was the hot end, the nozzle, came loose. It was wobbling around, causing a lot of errors in the XY direction. It might have been my fault because I put my own custom G-codes in the file, but I've also done this several times before without it happening. So it's hard to say if it's my fault or the printer's fault. The hot end is attached to the print head via these two screws, and once I tightened them up after the hot end gouged the build plate, the nozzle stopped wobbling. And once the nozzle stopped wobbling, I was able to reprint the sword in the hand, and they were much better in quality. If you look at the old sword compared to the new sword, you can see tightening up that nozzle really cleaned up the quality of the print. Okay, so now that Gandalf is done printing, let's take a closer look at him. 
But before we do, keep in mind that he was printed at a 0.4 layer height, a speed of 90 millimeters per second, and with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. So this print was optimized for speed and not for detail, but I'm still very happy with the way he came out. I'm impressed with how much detail came through even with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. The wrinkles in his fabric as well as the braiding in his belt are still pretty clear. The layers are very consistent with no fair scaling or resonances. When it comes to his face and his beard, however, you can see the printer struggled a little bit more. Most of the problems appear in his upper torso, and I'll show you some close-up shots of the rest of him so you can be the judge. This pattern isn't fish scaling, it's an intentional pattern in the model. I'm going to share some thoughts with you while I'm sitting inside the 3D printer. And no, this isn't bad for it. I've done this before and the bed has been totally fine. The first rhetorical question I have for Elegu is, who is this printer for? This printer hasn't been reliable so far, and several other YouTubers and me have had issues with prints randomly stopping, prints failing, and the bed being gouged. This printer's claim to fame is that it can make huge prints, but I don't feel like I can trust it. I'm afraid that if I commit to a huge print, it's gonna fail and I'll lose a lot of money in filament. One thing I've realized so far is all of my prints fit in just this quadrant of the 3D printer, and I already have a garbage bag full of failed prints. I'm afraid to commit to bigger prints, but for the sake of this video, I'll give it a shot. Before I commit to bigger, multi-day 3D prints, I want to move this printer into the basement because it's really loud. The printer is now in my basement. It only took one weekend to take it apart, move it downstairs, and put it back together. Let's go ahead and print some enormous things on it right now. So the first big print I made after I moved the printer into the basement was this enormous plunger gripper thingy. It's a 300% scale version of this. This is what a normal one looks like. And this huge 300% version took 15 hours to print, again, with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle at a 0.4 millimeter layer height. And this print came out pretty well. I would say the first layer was a little bit sketchy, but other than that, the layers look good. It functions well, it's a print-in-place model, um, there's no issues with the gears, obviously it has some backlash because it's so big, but I would say it's a great print and it's only failed once. Here's another big print I did with the Elegu Orange Storm Giga. It's actually for a friend and it's a center console for a Pontiac Firebird. This took about 30 hours to print. And it took me three tries to get it right, mainly because I was printing it with PETG. I used a bed temperature of 90 degrees Celsius for this print, and because of that, the printer was drawing 1200 watts while printing. Like I said, it took three tries to get this right, and I'll show you some of my failed attempts. So for my first attempt, I used a grid support pattern on the center console, and this was a very bad idea because as PETG cools, it shrinks, and with all these lines going in the same direction, it caused some severe warping in the print, and it caused it to peel off the build plate. Well, actually, the print stuck so well to the build plate that it peeled the build plate off the 3D printer, as you can see here. So for my next attempt, I used a cross support pattern to minimize the stress from cooling. I also printed with a wider brim, and I put the print in the center of the 3D printer. But remember how I said that the printer took 1200 watts of power to print this PETG? Little did I know that my printer was connected to the same circuit as my microwave. So when my wife tried to microwave some breakfast last morning, our microwave is 1200 watts. So the 1200 watts from the microwave and the 1200 watts from the 3D printer overloaded the circuit and tripped a breaker. So I had to start over. But luckily, third time's a charm. We moved the microwave to a separate circuit and I was able to bang this print out in 30 hours. The only problem is this layer right over here. But other than that, it's a pretty solid print. I think it'll make a good center console for a Pontiac Firebird. Okay, so now that I've done a couple of big prints on the Elegu Orange Storm Giga, I want to take back what I said earlier. I think my experience with the Gandalf print made me overestimate how unreliable this printer can be. But even though I had some problems with the grabber and the center console, I was eventually able to work things out. That being said, I do still have some constructive criticism for Elegu. Do you see this cable over here? It's permanently attached to the tablet, 
So if this cable was to break, you'd have to replace both the cable and the tablet. Now I have three cats and they love chewing through cables. So if my cats were to bite through this cable, I would have to replace the cable and the screen at the same time. Also, this emergency stop button isn't actually an emergency stop. Normally, the way an emergency stop works is if you press it, it'll turn off power to the device. But in this case, the emergency stop button simply resets the firmware of the printer. I wasn't there when it happened, but my wife claims that when she was using the printer, the printhead kept moving even after she pressed the emergency stop button. Also, when I first got this printer, I thought it was dead on arrival because when I flipped the power button, nothing happened. After about 30 minutes, I discovered a hidden circuit breaker that also had to be turned on for the printer to be turned on. And that breaker wasn't mentioned anywhere in the instructions. I'm gonna circle around to a previous point I made earlier, and that's, who is this printer for? Whenever you 3D print something, one of the constraints you run into is build volume. With this 3D printer, you just blow that constraint out of the water. You'll never have to worry about build volume ever again. You'll only be limited by how much money you're willing to spend on filament and how much time you're willing to wait for a print to complete. But even if all these enormous prints, most of them fit on just one build plate of the four build plates of this 3D printer. And each of these smaller build plates actually belongs to the Neptune 4 Max. So I think 95% of people would just be better off paying $500 for a Neptune 4 Max instead of $2,500 for the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. Now personally, I'm thankful to have this 3D printer in my arsenal, but if I'm being honest, if Elegoo didn't give me this printer for free, I don't think I would have gone out of my way to buy it. You see, it's useful to be able to print big things, but once you start 3D printing things a meter tall, you have to ask yourself, is 3D printing really the answer to my problem? For example, if you're 3D printing an enormous thing for an engineering project, say a functional part, why wouldn't you just make it out of wood or metal? If you're making a cosplay item like a chestplate or a sword, at this scale, you could just make it cheaper and faster out of foam or some other material. The Elegoo Orange Storm Giga is truly a unique 3D printer. As far as consumer gadgets go, there's nothing out there that's like it right now. If you have a specific need for 3D printing enormous things, this can be a very powerful tool to add to your collection. But it does have a learning curve, so make sure you know how to troubleshoot 3D prints. Even though I didn't run into any major issues with this printer, a lot of other YouTubers did. So I really hope Elegoo takes the time to improve this printer in future versions. Did you guys order the 3D printer or are you planning on getting it? Let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, thank you for watching.